Supercross breaks free of the West with the start of the East Coast 250 Championship, and it was all Red Bull KTM. We talked to Amsoil Arena Cross points leader Jacob Hayes for a recap on the season so far. An American team owner and racer on an American-built superbike taking on the world? We get the scoop from Larry Pegram. And we head down under for the Troy Bayless Classic. All that and more only on the Racer X Show. Hello and welcome. This is the Racer X Show, and I'm your host, Greg White. We socialize with a sick Bubba Scrub, have some fantasy picks, and have all the TV time for racing you want to see. Busy show. Let's get moving. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by the Cherubies. Soul and passion. We start with the Supercross segment presented by Acherubis. The Monster Energy Supercross Series landed at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, hosting the seventh race of the 2015 season in front of 55,000 fans. This race also marked the opener for the Eastern Regional 250 Class Championship. And what did those 55,000 fans get? Domination by the Red Bull KTM team. We start with the 250s. The Eastern Regional 250SX Class main event began with Red Bull KTM's Marvin Muskan grabbing the first SupercrossLive.com hole shot ahead of Rockstar Energy Husqvarna Factory Racing's Martin Davalos and number one plated Geico Honda's Justin Bogle. While Muskan opened up a small gap, Bogle passed Davalos for second, with the Husky rider hitting the ground soon after. After missing the entire 2014 Supercross season, Muskan looks like it's just another day at the office for him. But then the red flag came out. A crash by AG Motorsport Honda's Kyle Cunningham, the cause. Since the 15-lap race was past its halfway point to restart, a staggered lineup of riders across the start straight. Muskan pinned it, with Bogle right behind. The two heat winners, the two fastest guys of the night, opened up the question, now what would happen? How about the battle for third? You have number 37, Joey Savacci, number 62, Anthony Rodriguez, number six, Jeremy Martin, and number 43, Matthew Lemoyne. It was crazy, great racing, fierce competition. But in racing, something's gotta give. Savacci was in a comfortable third, leaving this late battle for fourth with Lemoyne and Martin. A missed triple, Martin goes on by. But uncontested, all race long from stem to stern, number 25, Marvin Muskan. Zavachi, his first career podium, third. Muskan with his fifth career main event win, well, he wins, so he gets to talk. I feel like this year is the year. I mean, two years ago was supposed to be the year also. Like, so I just want to enjoy the time, you know. I'm still, I'm 25 years old, maybe I feel older, you know. Those guys are like 18, 20 years old, but I don't mind. I mean, I like it. I like it a lot. My, my bike was unbelievable. So how about that? From KTM, Honda, Kawasaki, and Yamaha. Parity, it's a good thing, my friends. Now to the 450s. And from the drop of the gate, just like he did in his heat, Ryan Dungey on his Red Bull KTM led the field to earn his first SupercrossLive.com hole shot award. But coming back from injury and going down in the first turn, Weston Pike. The Autotrader.com Toyota Yamaha rider also took Jake Weimer on the Team Tedder with him. A good start for class rookie number four, Yoshimura Factory Suzuki's Blake Baggett, but RCH Soaring Eagle Jimmy John Suzuki's Ken Roxon had other ideas, making this move to try and negate a not so great start. A bit further back, number 22, Discount Tires Chad Reed, and number three, Geico Honda's Eli Tomac. Tomac tried this last week, and this time the 2008 Supercross champ goes down. Tomac was on a charge until this mistake. He gets flicked off the bike. Good thing he didn't get hurt. Number 94 Roxon then set his sights on number 18 Monster Energy Kawasaki's Davey Millsaps. This pass is for second. And then Millsaps had this really strange crash. He loops out, hits the ground hard. But for Dungey, it was clear sailing to win number 16, a flag to flag win, and celebrates with a heel clicker just for good measure. Best career 450 result for Baggett. With Dungey's win and Muskan's in 250, KTM got its third ever main event sweep in both classes. Way to go, Ryan. That whole shot was key. I, I knew it from the beginning, and you don't want to stress on it because you got to let it happen. But uh, 
we got out like a rocket ship, and I saw the inside was open. I went, I tucked in, controlled the first turn, and then uh, from there, I just tried to lay the laps down as best I could. Dungy's win gives him 12 over Roxon and moves him into a tie with Jean-Michel Bale for 13th on the all-time 450 class win list. If you're looking for a high water mark in KTM's rise in the Monster Energy Supercross, look no further than last Saturday night at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Between 450 Supercross winner Ryan Dungey and 250 Supercross winner Marvin Muscan, Red Bull KTM dominated the whole event. Both led from start to finish and now both wear the red plates of points leaders. In Dungey's case, this will be the latest that the orange bike has held the red plate in the season. In Muscan's case, this is the first time he's ever led points in AMA Supercross. Of course, KTM has won events and championships before, but Supercross has always been just a little out of reach. They've dominated so much in the past half dozen years on the FIM World Championship circuit that it's hard to remember a time that the brand was shut out of the title hunt. In off-road racing in America, they are a juggernaut and they hold the AMA 450 Motocross Championship, even though they lost the rider who earned that number one plate, Ken Roxon, to Suzuki-mounted RCH Racing. Now, that's probably a large reason why Arlington must feel so good for Roger DeCoster and the entire Red Bull KTM team. Dungey has never looked more comfortable or aggressive on the bike as he does right now. Every Saturday night that they keep those red plates, will be a new high water mark for KTM, as well as for Ryan Dungey and Marvin Muscan. Make sure you check out Supercross Live on Fox Sports 1 this weekend from the Georgia Dome in Hotlanta, the first of two in a row, 7 p.m. East, and hashtag who's next on all of your social media. And that's our Supercross segment presented by a Acherbees. This week, the Amsoil Arena Cross Series featuring Ricky Carmichael's Road to Supercross is taking a break. So we thought we'd chat with points leader number two on the Babbitt's Monster Energy Amsoil Kawasaki team, Jacob Hayes. Welcome once again to the Racer X Show. Good to have you. Good to be here, guys. All right, season review right now. You start off in Cincinnati and you fall down a few times. Get up with a 10th in the first main, but the second was a little bit better. Got the whole shot and just uh, kind of rode a good, smart race and end of the weekend on a good note, you know, and uh, working towards, you know, each weekend getting better and better and, you know, keeping the keeping the ball rolling. We moved to Grand Rapids, Michigan, and you're keeping the ball rolling. Had a good night, you know, clicked off a win and then got a second. With the Friday night overall, you followed it up with a Saturday 11th overall. You followed that up with a rebound win in Colorado Springs Friday night and third Saturday night. Now on to Nashville. So I got off to two decent starts and uh, the first main event, me and Matt Gorky ended up passing each other back and forth quite a few times, got up to third. So, you know, I was happy with that, with how I felt throughout the night. And then the next main event, um, got off to a third place start and passed Bobby Canary and just settled down behind Chris. You know, Chris had a really great night. He was fastest in practice, won his heat, won the head to heads, you know. Can't, can't get much better than what he did in Nashville and um, finished second overall, so I was happy. Matt Gerke started to crash, finishing 13th, opening up the points, now to Pennsylvania and Wilkes-Barre Friday night. Man, I had the speed all night. I, I won the head-to-head -head Friday night and felt good going into the main event. And actually, me and Bobby Canary were fighting for the lead going through the whoops. And uh, I took a chance and ended up trying to rail the berm and, and sneak out of there and get away. But uh, we rubbed a little shoulders and I ended up washing the front end and going down. So it came from 15th back to 7th and worked through the pack good. You know, I was really happy with some of my passing and um, with how the bike worked. And uh, then the second main event worked my way from about 5th up to 2nd. So, you know, uh, can't complain with that um, result off the second row. So I was happy. Saturday night, you tangle with Kyle Regal and go down, finish 8th. That wasn't good. Couldn't get the bike started and, uh, you know, eighth, which is a bummer. You know, you don't ever want to see a eighth place finish, you know, when you're leading the, the points. And then the next one, you know, I, uh, I put my head down. I knew I had to be up front. I knew I had the speed all weekend to be up front. So I wanted to put the Team Babbitt, Smart Energy, Amsoil, Kawasaki where it belonged. Well, thanks once again for being on the Racer X Show and giving us this review of the season so far. And we look forward to seeing your results from this weekend. I appreciate it, guys. It's good to be here. You can watch round two of the Amsoil Arena Cross Series from Grand Rapids, Michigan. A cup of coffee and Arena Cross. Perfect.
Last week we showed you the FIM Any World Superbike schedule. One change, Moscow was taken off the list on Wednesday. But still on is round one from Phillip Island, Australia, where American racer and team owner Larry Pegram will be making his debut on the Wisconsin-made EBR Racing 1190RX under the Team Hero EBR Racing umbrella. I had a chance to catch up with Larry just before he left for Australia and talk with him about what's going on. Hey Larry, thanks for joining us. How you doing? Good. How you doing, Greg? I'm great and excited for you. What's been going on with you this off season? Uh, now we've been uh, we've been getting the Team Hero EBR uh, thing up and running. We we um, we kind of knew way back in like September we were doing it, but we got a late start and just been just getting ready. Basically, we just tested in Spain at Jerez, and then before that at Portimao, we tested at Nola and Jennings here in the United States. Um, so we've been really busy getting everything ready, getting uh, got a new paint scheme and new clothes, you know how it is for and everything. And then I basically took my team from here, here in the United States and moved everything to uh, to Italy, you know, and uh, and added some a few more guys. Pretty much our whole team is American guys, which is what I thought we needed um, because EBR being an American company, an American bike, it definitely didn't work out the way they did it last year. So, um, you know, that's it. Just been super busy. <laughs> Now, during the season, you're going to be doing some special stuff for us here on the Racer X Show and the web. What's that? With with Hero being the title sponsor, and then we're we're gonna um, we're gonna do like a 90 second clip at each of the World Superbike events, kind of updating everybody on what's going on and, and get that out on uh, you know on on social media and, and to you guys and to um, to uh, to Hero on Hero's website and EBR's website and some of the other people. So it'll be uh, it'll be a really good deal to update everybody on what's happening. Uh, we I think we have to wait 48 hours to be able to do it after the race is over because of the rules with Dorna. But um, you know it'll be pretty quick after to kind of give a behind the scenes look. And then also, also this year we're going to be doing Superbike Family again, which is going to be pretty exciting for uh it's going to be the uh, griswolds kind of taking over europe but at a super bike race so it should be pretty pretty interesting well we look forward to seeing what's going on with you your family your crew and your world Superbike experience i appreciate it yeah we've made some huge steps since last year you know the last test we just did we were three seconds quicker uh than they were the year before so i think we're gonna be able to bring a little bit of pride back to EBR in America and, and, and show that, uh, you know, we're not planning on going out there and winning the first race, but we're definitely planning on getting in the top 10 and, and, and being, in, uh, being in contention. Thanks, Larry, and good luck this weekend. Round one from Phillip Island. You can catch Larry and New Yorker PJ Jacobson race the world on BN Sport Network. Coverage begins Saturday night at 7 p.m. East with the pre-race show, racing at 7.30 until midnight. Five hours of World Superbike coverage. Get B in Sport on your TV now. A couple weeks ago, AMA Pro Flat Track Champion Jared Mees told us he was headed to Australia for a flat track event called the Troy Bayless Classic. Bayless is a former World Superbike Champ and MotoGP star. Flat Track Live gave us some footage of that race. The third edition of the Troy Bayless Classic was held under perfect skies and 93 degrees in front of over 6,000 fans in Tari, Australia's Tari Motorcycle Club Oil Track run in the TT configuration. The field was stacked with great riders from around the world, including last year's race winner and namesake, Troy Bayless. Big names from the US, flat trackers, Sammy Halbert, Henry Wiles, and number one plated Jared Meese. With Meese passing Australian dirt track legend, Paul Kaslick, Meese cranked it up. Wiles made his way past Kaslick with four to go, but Bayless just missed out on the podium. So after defeat in Spain at the hands of MotoGP champ Marc Marquez, the U.S. national number one makes good, taking the win with a big wave to the crowd. I know he'll be back for another Troy Bayless Classic. Thanks to Flat Track Live for that footage. You can check out amazing videos from last week's Del Mar race, the Troy Bayless Classic, and so much more. Go to facebook.com slash flat track live and give it a like. You'll satisfy your dirt track itch with Flat Track Live. And speaking of watching racing, you can either watch or get your dirt bike out and go race the Amsoil GNCC series. They have classes for everyone. Here's a look at the calendar. The 2015 GNCC schedule is up on GNCCRacing.com, and here's a look. 13 rounds this year, beginning March 7th and 8th in Florida. The next weekend in Washington, Georgia, UTVs in that one. 
A week break, then Morganton, North Carolina, Steel Creek, that's a great march. Two in April, South Carolina, then Indiana. May has two, Odessa, New York, followed by Masontown, West Virginia. Two in June before the summer break, Ohio and Snowshoe, West Virginia. Things come back in action at Unadilla late September, and October kills it with three final rounds, PA, Ohio, and Ironman wrapping things up the first day of November. I'm definitely gonna try to get to one this year. Make sure you catch GNCC Racing Saturday, March 7th at 1 p.m. It'll be live on racertv.com. In just three weeks, the Mountain Dew ATV MX Series get super crossed out in Daytona. There's limited gate spots available, so get your ATV and go racing. When you enter, you get some extra stuff. A spot at the race, of course, gate admission starting Friday through the ATV race on Tuesday. That's five days worth. You can check out the Ricky Carmichael Supercross races and you get a free ticket to Saturday night's Supercross race. Go to ATVMotocross.com to register now. And pros, this is a points paying round for you. So get signed up today. And now it's socializing, a brief look at some social media that's caught our eye. How about this throwback Thursday from James Stewart? That is scrubalicious. I must've watched that one like 20 times in a row. And this, Look how cute injured Will Hahn looks. Happy Valentine's Day to you too, Will. And on the Goon with Style Instagram, a photo of ATV MX star Jeffrey Rastrelli. He's riding down in Argentina, a winter race below the equator, nice and warm. We want you to get out and watch some racing, like Arena Cross. That's happening Saturday night in Tampa, Florida at the Tampa Bay Times Forum. In Gaston, South Carolina, the opener of the Full Gas Sprint Enduro Series, race or watch. World Superbikes kick off 2015 in Phillip Island, Australia, in case you can make it. And the new series, Scramble Cross, debuts in Askey Farm, Texas. Supercross heads to the east in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Georgia Dome, Saturday and Saturday night. Tickets are available. Go to supercrossonline.com for more information and check it out. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by Acherbys, soul and passion. All right, that'll do it for us. Make sure you check out all of our social media, Twitter and Instagram, it's The Racer X Show. On YouTube, it's The Racer X Show. Like us, follow us, spread the word. We want you to. Feel free to post this video around. We love it and appreciate it. You can follow me personally on Twitter. It's at Greg White. Well, for the fine crew here at The Racer X Show and Racer TV, I'm Greg. Remember, we are all racing all the time. See you next time.